In this tutorial, I'll show you how to find the equilibrium concentrations from initial concentrations and the equilibrium constant. Let's start with question one. Consider the following reaction. A reaction mixture at 2000 degrees Celsius initially contains N2 of 0.200 molar and O2 of 0.200 molar. Find the equilibrium concentrations of the reactants and products at this temperature. Notice that they've only given us the initial concentrations of the reactants. This is much different than what we've seen before. In the past, we've seen questions give us the initial and one of the equilibrium concentrations, and from there we can find everything else. So this type of question is a little more mathematical. That being said, we'll break this down into steps. The first step is to use the balanced chemical equation that's already provided to prepare an ice table which tells us the initial change and equilibrium concentrations. This will help us organize our work. In case you're confused already, let me show you what I mean. So an ice table consists of three rows, I, C, and E. I for initial change and equilibrium. We'll write down N2 plus O2. This yields two molecules of NO. Now we've been given 0 0.2 0, 0, and 0 0.200 0 molars of the reactants, and we can assume that there is no product made, so its initial concentration is zero. In step number two, we want to use the initial concentrations to calculate the reaction quotient, that's Q, for the initial concentrations. And then we'll compare what we get for Q to K and predict the direction in which the reaction will proceed. We'll use this table to help us decode that information. So, the reaction quotient is equal to the concentration of the products. We have two molecules of NO and we have a concentration of zero. Zero raised to the power of two technically because of this coefficient divided by the concentrations here. So 0 0.200 and that's not being raised to anything but one because of the coefficient one, we don't show it, times 0 0.200. Whatever you multiply underneath here is going to result to zero because the numerator is zero to the power of two is zero. Therefore, our reaction quotient is zero. And according to this table, when the reaction quotient is zero, it shifts to the right, it moves forward. In step number three, we'll represent the change in the concentration of one of the reactants or products with the variable x. So I'll set this as x and I'll create ratios to find out what the change is for the other two molecules. Since it's a one to one ratio, this will also be x, and here it's a one to two ratio. So we multiply x by two, and since we're relating reactants to products, in other words, we're going to the other side of the chemical reaction, it has to be negative two x. Keep that in mind for future reference. So if you're comparing molecules that are in the reactants to the products, or vice versa, you switch the sign. Okay, now to find out E, we can add I and C together. So remember this formula for future reference, I plus C is equal to E. The equilibrium concentration for N2, therefore will be 0 0.200 plus X. Over here will be 0 0.200 plus X. And over here will be negative 2X. 0 plus negative 2X is negative 2X. Now we will create an equilibrium expression. So I'll say, Kc is equal to NO raised to the power of two over N2, that's being raised to the power of one, although there's no need to write that, and O2, it's concentration. Let's replace all of these with their algebraic expressions. So over here, I'll replace that with negative two X, and that's being raised to the power of two, over here, divided by the concentration of N2, which is 0 0.200 plus X, multiplied again to 0 0.200 plus X. On the left side of this equation, KC will be replaced with what was given in the question as 0 0.10. Now comes the mathematical part of this question, where we actually solve for X. Let's begin solving. As you can see, the denominator here, we have two factors that are identical. They're the exact same thing. 
So I can rewrite it, starting from the left side, 0 0.10 is equal to negative 2x raised to the power of 2. The bottom can be rewritten as 0 0.200 plus x raised to the power of 2. Both this term and this term of the equation are being raised to the power of 2. I can get rid of that power of 2 by square rooting both sides. So if I square root this side and I square root the right side, this 2 and this 2 will go away. This leads us to the equation where, remember, the square root of any number can give you a positive or negative version of that number. So I'll write down plus minus the square root of 0 0.10. And on the right side, after these 2's have been stripped away because of the square root, we get negative 2x over 0 0.200 plus x. By square rooting both sides, this technically makes the solving process a lot easier. Now this doesn't always happen. In many other examples, like the one after this one, you have to use the quadratic formula. Luckily, this one's a little easy. Now technically, you should be getting two answers here because we have to do the next set of calculations for the positive version and the negative version of this number. Let's begin with the positive version. To solve for x, we first multiply both sides by the bottom. So 0 0.200 plus x times the positive version of this expression is equal to negative 2x. By multiplying both sides by this expression, it actually cancels it out on the right side. This is why we're left with negative 2x. Then we expand. So we have 0 0.200 times the square root of 0 0.10. And you're probably wondering, how do we choose which x value is correct if we have two different versions? Well, I'm going to show you what to look for. We want to solve for x, so we group together these two, negative 2x minus the square root of 0.10x. And on the left side, we're left with that. And now, using our calculator, negative 2, remember we're combining like terms, so we're only concerned about the coefficient, minus the square root of 0.10. This gives us roughly negative 2.31. We divide both sides by negative 2.31 to isolate for x. So x is equal to this number divided by the value we got here. So I'll just write down negative 2.31 for reference. Watch. 0 0.200 times the square root of 0 0.10 divided by the answer we got prior, and we end up with negative 0 0.027. Negative 0 0.027. I'm going to tell you right now that this is the correct version. So by choosing the positive version, we happen to be right. Because our next step would be to replace x in our ice table, recall, with the number that we found. And if our number happened to be positive, which it isn't, and we place it into here, for example, then we would end up with an equilibrium that is negative, and that doesn't work. However, by placing a negative number, like the one that we found, into any of these expressions, we end up with a positive value. This is why the positive version of 0 0.10 is the right choice. So let's move on to the next step, find the equilibrium concentrations. I will now take each of those, so this one for example, and the molecule was N2. I'll take 0 0.200 and add it to the X value that we found of negative 0 0.0273. And the same thing for the next molecule, O2, its concentration. And lastly, for NO. We end up with the following values. And all of those are molars. Our last step could be to check if KC matches with the one that was given in the question. Remember, ours was 0 0.10. So if we use the expression NO raised to the power of 2 over the concentration of N2 times the concentration of O2, and we substituted these values in their appropriate location, you should end up with a Kc that's roughly 
equal to 0 0.1, which was that given in the question. And you can do that test on your own to prove that. And there you have it. That's the answer to question number one. If you'd like to see the solution to question two, make sure you return back and watch part two of this series.